Good evening. Welcome to sleep chamber. It is what it is. What happens, happens. And as for now, there's nothing you can do. There is something about being in nature that just makes you feel at peace. It is like all of your worries and troubles just vanish into thin air. Whenever I am feeling stressed or overwhelmed, I always take a walk outside. Even if it is just for a few minutes, it always makes me feel so much better. There is something about being surrounded by trees and fresh air that just makes me feel calmer. I think that people appreciate nature more when they live in a city. When you are constantly surrounded by concrete and steel, it can be easy to forget how beautiful the world can be. But when you take a step back and see all of the natural beauty that surrounds you, it is impossible not to appreciate it. There is just something about nature that is so captivating. It has a way of drawing you in and making you feel like everything is right in the world. It is a place where you can go to forget all of your troubles and just relax. It is the perfect place to clear your head and just enjoy the simple things in life. The beauty of nature is its sureness. It is the perfect place to clear your head and just enjoy the simple things in life. There is something about being in nature that just makes you feel at peace. It is a place where you can forget your worries and just be in the moment. There is something so common about being surrounded by trees, fresh air, and the sound of the leaves rustling in the wind. It is a place where you can truly relax and just be yourself. Nature has a way of making you feel small in the best way possible. When you are surrounded by towering mountains and vast oceans, it reminds you of how insignificant your problems are. It is a humbling experience that can help you put things into perspective. Sometimes we get so caught up in our own lives that we forget there is a whole world out there. Nature is a reminder that there is so much more to life than what we see in our everyday lives. Spending time in nature can also be a very grounding experience. In a world that is constantly changing and evolving, it can be difficult to keep up. Nature is a constant reminder that some things never change. The sun will always rise and set, the moon will always wax and wane, and the seasons will always change. It is a reminder that no matter how chaotic the world may be, there are still some things that we can rely on. Nature is also a great place to find inspiration. When you are feeling creatively stuck, there is nothing like a walk in the woods to jumpstart your imagination. The beauty of nature can be a great source of inspiration for artists, writers, and musicians. There is something about being in nature that just makes you feel more creative. Maybe it is the fresh air or the calming atmosphere, but there is no doubt that nature is a great place to find inspiration. The next time you are feeling stressed or overwhelmed, take a break and go outside. 
spend some time in nature and just appreciate the beauty and serenity it has to offer. It is a great way to clear your head and just enjoy the simple things in life. It's easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of everyday life and forget to appreciate the simple things. But when you take a step back and take a moment to appreciate the little things, Life can be so much more enjoyable. Here are a few simple things to enjoy in life. 1. A sunny day There's nothing like soaking up some vitamin D and enjoying the warm weather. 2. A good cup of coffee Whether you make it at home or enjoy it at your favorite cafe, there's nothing like a delicious cup of coffee. 3. A beautiful sunset Watching the colors of the sky change as the sun sets is a truly magical experience. 4. A good book Getting lost in a great story is one of the best ways to relax and escape from the stresses of everyday life. 5. A cozy blanket There's nothing like snuggling up with a soft blanket on a chilly day. 6. A tasty meal Whether you're cooking at home or enjoying a meal out, there's nothing like a delicious meal to make you feel happy. 7. A fun night out Sometimes it's nice to let loose and have some fun. Whether you're going out for drinks with friends or dancing the night away, a fun night out is always a good time. 8. A quiet moment In the midst of a busy day, it can be nice to take a moment to yourself to relax and clear your mind. 9. A hug Sometimes all you need is a hug from a loved one to make you feel better. 10. A good night's sleep After a long day, there's nothing like a good night's sleep to refresh and rejuvenate you. It is often said that the simplest things in life are the most important. This is especially true when it comes to the things that make us happy. While we may not always realize it, the small, everyday moments are often what bring the most joy into our lives. One of the best things about the simple things in life is that they are available to everyone. No matter who you are or where you come from, everyone can enjoy the beauty of a sunset or the warmth of a hug. These things may seem insignificant, but they can make a big difference in our lives. The simple things in life are a reminder that we don't need material possessions to be happy. We can find happiness in the simple things that are all around us. We just need to take the time to appreciate them. One of the best things about the simple things in life is that they are free. We don't have to spend any money to enjoy them. We can just sit back and enjoy the moment. The simple things in life are also a great way to connect with other people. When we take the time to appreciate the simple things, we can connect with others who are doing the same. We can share our joy and happiness with others. The simple things in life are a reminder that we should be grateful for what we have. We often take the things we have for granted, 
but when we take the time to appreciate the simple things, we realize how lucky we are. Did I tell you that I recently decided to try meditation? Meditation has been practiced for centuries, with a long and rich history. In the West, it was first introduced in the early 20th century by Eastern spiritual teachers. Since then, it has been increasingly adopted by people of all faiths and backgrounds as a way to promote physical and mental well-being. There are many different types of meditation, but all involve focusing the mind on a single point of attention, such as the breath, a mantra, or a visual object. The practice can be done sitting, lying down, or even walking. With regular practice, meditation can help to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression, and can also improve sleep quality and concentration. The history of meditation is closely intertwined with the history of religion and spirituality. In the East, the practice has been a central part of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism for thousands of years. In the West, it was first introduced by Eastern spiritual teachers in the early 20th century. It is difficult to pinpoint the exact origins of meditation, but it is clear that it has been practiced for centuries. One of the earliest references to meditation is in the Hindu scriptures known as the Vedas, which date back to around 15 BCE. In the Vedas, meditation is described as a way to still the mind and connect with the divine. Buddhism also has a long history of meditation, with the practice being central to the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment through meditation, and he taught his followers to meditate as a way to reach nirvana, or liberation from suffering. Meditation began to spread to the West in the early 20th century, thanks to the efforts of Eastern spiritual teachers, such as Ramana Maharshi and Swami Vivekananda. These teachers traveled to the West to share their wisdom, and their teachings were popularized by Westerners such as Alan Watts and Aldous Huxley. Since then, meditation has been increasingly adopted by people of all faiths and backgrounds as a way to promote physical and mental well-being. In recent years, meditation has been hailed as a panacea for a wide range of ills, from stress and anxiety to chronic pain and insomnia. If you're interested in trying meditation, there are many resources available to help you get started. There are also many different types of meditation, so you can find a practice that suits your needs and interests. I started meditating recently and it has been a really great experience. I had never really done anything like it before and wasn't sure what to expect. But so far, I have really enjoyed it. The first time I tried it, I sat down in a comfortable position and just tried to focus on my breath. I soon found that my mind was racing and I was thinking about all sorts of things. But I just kept focusing on my breath and eventually, I started to feel more relaxed. I also felt a bit more aware of my surroundings and my body. Since then, I have been meditating every day and I have noticed a lot of benefits. I have more energy and I feel more focused. I also feel calmer and more relaxed. I would definitely recommend meditation to anyone who is looking for a way to improve their health and well-being. 
I think that one of the best things about meditation is that it is something that you can do anywhere and at any time. You don't need any special equipment or anything like that. All you need is yourself and a bit of time. It was kind of random that I started to meditate. There are many things in life that can be considered random. For example, the weather can be random. One day it could be sunny and the next day it could be raining. Another example of something that can be considered random is the lottery. People can play the lottery and have a chance of winning, but there is no guarantee that they will win. Some people might say that randomness is a bad thing because it can lead to unexpected events happening that may not be desirable. However, randomness can also lead to good things happening. For example, if a person is randomly selected to receive a prize, they may be very happy. Overall, randomness is a part of life and it can be considered both good and bad. It is up to each individual to decide whether they think randomness is a good or bad thing. Randomness is something that we encounter on a daily basis, whether we realize it or not. It's the element of chance that can lead to new and wonderful experiences or to complete and utter disaster. It's what makes life unpredictable and exciting, and ultimately, what makes it worth living. Without randomness, life would be incredibly boring. Imagine if every day was exactly the same, with no surprises or unexpected events. We would quickly become bored and restless, longing for something new to break up the monotony. It's the element of chance that keeps us on our toes and always guessing, never quite knowing what's going to happen next. In many ways, randomness is the essence of beauty. It's what makes a sunset so stunning, or a flower so delicate. It's the sudden burst of color in an otherwise dull landscape. It's the way that a baby's smile can light up a room. It's the things that we can't control or predict that make life so beautiful and worth living. Life would be pretty boring if everything was predictable. We would know what was going to happen all the time and there would be no surprises. Randomness is what makes life interesting and exciting. It's what keeps us on our toes and always guessing. Without randomness, we would probably all be pretty bored. We wouldn't have any reason to take risks or try new things. Everything would be the same all the time and it would be pretty dull. Randomness is what makes life worth living. It's what makes us unique and different from one another. Without randomness, life would be pretty boring. We would all be the same and there would be no surprises. Randomness is what makes life interesting and exciting. It's what keeps us on our toes and always guessing. Sarah was a woman who lived a predictable life without randomness. She always knew what was going to happen next and never had any surprises. Her life was like a well-oiled machine running smoothly and efficiently. 
She never had to worry about anything because she always knew what was going to happen. Even though her life lacked spontaneity, she was content with the way things were. She knew that she could always count on the predictability of her life to get her through whatever she faced. Sarah always woke up at 7 a.m., started her day with a cup of coffee, and then went to work. She had a desk job at a local company, and she was good at it. She was always one of the first to arrive at work and one of the last to leave. She never took breaks and always got her work done as quickly and efficiently as possible. Her co-workers admired her work ethic, but they also found her to be a bit boring. She never joined in on their conversations or gossip, and she always kept to herself. At the end of the day, Sarah would go home to her small apartment. She would make herself dinner and then spend the rest of the evening reading or watching TV. She always went to bed at 10 p.m. and got a full eight hours of sleep. She didn't have many friends, but she was content with her life. She was happy to have a predictable routine that she could always count on. Sarah's life was changed one day when she won the lottery. She was suddenly faced with a large sum of money that she never thought she'd have. She didn't know what to do with it and was overwhelmed by all of the possibilities. She was used to her predictability and didn't know how to handle this new randomness in her life. Sarah consulted with a financial advisor and they came up with a plan for her to invest her money. With her newfound wealth, Sarah was able to quit her job and retire early. She also decided to travel and see the world. She went on exciting adventures and met new people. For the first time in her life, she felt alive and spontaneity. Although her life was no longer predictable, Sarah was happy with the new direction it had taken. She was finally able to experience all the things she'd been missing out on. She was grateful for the change and appreciated all the new experiences that came with it. George, on the other hand, George always seemed to live a life that was filled with randomness and unpredictability. He never knew what was going to happen next, and it often seemed like anything and everything was possible. This made for a life that was always interesting, to say the least. George never seemed to follow any sort of conventional path in life. He would often take the most random and unexpected turns, which would often lead to new and exciting experiences. It was never quite clear what George was going to do next, but that was part of the fun. One of the things that made George so interesting was his ability to find the beauty and excitement in the mundane. He was always able to see the potential for adventure in everyday situations, no matter how banal they may have initially seemed. This approach to life meant that George was always open to new experiences and willing to take risks. It also meant that he was often the life of the party, always ready to inject some fun and excitement into any situation. Overall, George lived a life that was filled with randomness and unpredictability. This made for a life that was always interesting and exciting. 
George was always able to find the beauty and excitement in the mundane, and this made him a truly unique individual. Kim and Robin had been best friends for as long as they could remember. They had always been up for anything, and so when they decided to go on a road trip together, they knew that they wanted to make it as adventurous as possible. They came up with the idea to let random people decide what they should do and go next. They would start by posting a sign at a busy intersection, asking people to write down an activity or destination for them to do or go to. They would then pick one at random and go do it. They had a blast doing this, and it led to some really great memories. They got to try new things, meet new people, and see new places that they never would have otherwise. It was the best trip they had ever been on, and they would always treasure the memories they made. One time, they ended up at a small town festival that they never would have known about otherwise. They ate the best food they had ever tasted, and danced the night away. They made friends with everyone there, and it was just an all-around great experience. Another time, they ended up at a secluded beach that was absolutely beautiful. They spent the day swimming, sunbathing, and just relaxing. It was the perfect way to spend a day, and they were so grateful that they got to experience it. All in all, it was the best trip they had ever been on. Going traveling is one of the best things you can do in life. It allows you to see new places, experience different cultures, and learn more about yourself. It can be a life-changing experience, and it's something that everyone should do at least once. There are so many benefits to going traveling. It broadens your horizons and helps you to see the world from a different perspective. It can be a great way to learn about new cultures and to meet new people. It's also a great way to relax and to get away from the stresses of everyday life. If you're thinking of going traveling, there are a few things you need to consider. First of all, you need to decide where you want to go. There are so many amazing places to see, so it's important to choose a destination that you're really going to enjoy. It's also important to think about your budget and to make sure you can afford to go where you want to go. Once you've decided where you want to go, you need to start planning your trip. This includes booking your flights and accommodation, and making sure you have all the necessary documents. It's also a good idea to research the destination, and to find out what there is to see and do. This will help you to make the most of your trip and to avoid any disappointments. When you're finally ready to go on your trip, make sure you pack everything you need and that you have all your documents in order. Then, all that's left to do is to enjoy your trip and to create some amazing memories. Since the beginning of time, people have gazed up at the stars and dreamed of visiting them. In the last century, we have made that dream a reality. Space travel has captured the public imagination like nothing else. It is an adventure like no other, full of danger, excitement and mystery. Space travel has come a long way in a short time. The 
first manned space flight was only in 1961. Since then, we have sent people to the moon and built a space station. We have sent probes to all the planets in our solar system and even beyond. We have come a long way, but there is still so much to explore. The universe is a vast and fascinating place. There are so many things to see and discover. We have only just scratched the surface. There is so much more to learn about the universe and our place in it. Space travel is expensive and dangerous. It takes a lot of training and preparation. But it is also an incredible experience. There is nothing like the feeling of weightlessness and the view of the Earth from space. It is an experience that everyone should have. We have come a long way in our exploration of space, but there is still so much to do. Space travel is an important part of our future. It is an adventure that we should all take part in. Space is one of the most fascinating topics to explore. It is an infinite frontier that has captivated the imaginations of people for centuries. Even now, in the era of space exploration, there are still many mysteries about space that have yet to be revealed. There is no doubt that space is a vast and dangerous place. It is home to many dangers, such as asteroids, comets, and other space debris. Even the most experienced astronauts are at risk when venturing into space. However, these dangers are also what make space such an exciting place to explore. In addition to the dangers, space is also incredibly beautiful. The stars, planets, and other astronomical objects are a sight to behold. Even the most jaded person can't help but be awestruck when looking at the night sky. Despite the dangers and the beauty, space is still an unknown place. There are many mysteries about space that have yet to be solved. For example, scientists are still trying to determine the exact nature of dark matter and dark energy. They are also trying to understand the origins of the universe and how it will end. The exploration of space is an ongoing journey that has captivated the imaginations of people for centuries. It is an infinite frontier that is full of dangers, beauty, and mystery. Aliens have been a topic of fascination for centuries, with people wondering if there is life on other planets. Although there is no scientific evidence to support the existence of aliens, many people believe that they exist and that they have visited our planet. There are many theories about aliens, such as they are advanced beings that are observing us or they are here to help us. Some people even believe that aliens have abducted them or that they have seen aliens in their spacecraft. Whether you believe in aliens or not, it is hard to deny that they are a popular topic in our culture. There are movies, TV shows, and books about aliens, and people dress up as aliens for Halloween. It seems like everyone is interested in aliens, even if they don't believe they exist. So, what exactly are aliens? 
Are they real or just a figment of our imaginations? If they are real, where do they come from and what do they want? These are all questions that remain unanswered, but that doesn't stop people from speculating. There are many theories about aliens, but the most popular one is that they are intelligent beings from another planet. Some people believe that aliens are observing us and that they are more advanced than us. Others believe that aliens are here to help us, either by giving us guidance or by helping us solve our problems. Some people believe that aliens have already visited our planet. They point to things like crop circles and mysterious lights in the sky as evidence. Others believe that aliens have abducted them or that they have seen aliens in their spacecraft. Whether you believe in aliens or not, it is hard to deny that they are a popular topic in our culture. There have been many reports of alien sightings over the years. Some people believe that these sightings are of real aliens, while others believe that they are just hoaxes. There is no way to know for sure what people are seeing, but there are some interesting stories out there. One of the most famous alien sightings occurred in 1947. A man named Kenneth Arnold was flying his plane near Mount Rainier in Washington State when he saw nine strange objects flying in the sky. He described the objects as being like saucers that were skipping on water. He reported his sighting to the media, and it quickly spread. People all over the country began reporting similar sightings. This event is often considered to be the beginning of the modern UFO phenomenon. There have been many other famous alien sightings since then. In 1961, a woman named Betty and Barney Hill were driving through New Hampshire when they saw a strange object in the sky. They claimed to have been abducted by aliens and taken aboard a spaceship. They described the aliens as being small, with large eyes and gray skin. They said that the aliens performed medical experiments on them before returning them to their car. There have also been many reports of people seeing strange lights in the sky. Some people believe that these lights are from alien spacecraft. Others believe that they are just natural phenomena, such as meteors or northern lights. There is no way to know for sure what people are seeing, but it is definitely something that people are interested in. Whether or not aliens exist is still a mystery. There is no concrete evidence that they do, but there are also no concrete evidence that they don't. People will continue to see strange things in the sky and will continue to wonder if aliens are real. I met a man called Mick once that said he knew aliens exist. It never thought much about aliens or space. He was content living his life on Earth, going to work and spending time with his family. However, one fateful day changed all of that. Nick was out for a walk, enjoying the fresh air when he saw something strange in the sky. At first, he thought it was a bird, but as he watched it, he realized that it was definitely not a bird. It was some kind of spacecraft, and it was coming right for him. 
Nick was terrified, but he didn't have time to run. The spacecraft landed right in front of him, and out stepped an alien. The alien was friendly, and it started to communicate with Nick telepathically. The alien showed Nick images of different planets and galaxies, and Nick was fascinated. He realized that there was so much more out there in the universe than he had ever imagined. The alien told Nick that he was chosen to be the ambassador for Earth, and that he needed to go back and study everything he could about aliens in space. Nick was hesitant at first, but eventually he agreed. He said goodbye to his family and began his new life as an interstellar student. Nick has been studying aliens and space for years now, and he's learned a lot. He knows that there are many different intelligent life forms out there, and that some of them are very different from humans. He's also learned about the dangers of space and how important it is to be careful. Nick is still learning, but he's come a long way from the frightened man who first encountered an alien. He's now a respected authority on aliens in space, and he's even made contact with some of the other intelligent life forms out there. Who knows what the future holds for Nick? Nick also told me about a friend of his, the friendly alien Robert. Robert was an alien from a faraway planet. He was a curious creature, and he loved to explore the universe. He visited many different planets and met many different creatures. He even made friends with some of them. One day, Robert decided to visit Earth. He was fascinated by the human beings he saw there. He observed them for a while, and then he decided to interact with them. He started by making friends with some of the children. They were fascinated by him, and they loved to hear about his adventures. Eventually, Robert became a part of the human community. He even got a job and started to contribute to society. He was happy on Earth, and he loved the humans he had come to know. However, one day, Robert received a message from his home planet. His family was in trouble, and they needed his help. Robert was reluctant to leave, but he knew he had to go. So, he said goodbye to his friends and family on Earth, and he set off on his journey back home. It was a long and difficult journey, but Robert made it back to his home planet. He was able to help his family by using his knowledge and skills to make their lives better. He started building them a new home, getting them new jobs, and teaching them how to live sustainably off the land. He was happy to be able to help them, and he enjoyed his new life with them. However, after a few years, he began to feel restless. He had seen and done everything he could on his home planet, and he wanted to see more of the universe. So, he set out on a journey, traveling to different planets and learning about their cultures and customs. He had many adventures and made many new friends during his travels. 
He even fell in love with a beautiful alien woman called Elian. But eventually, he realized that there was nothing left for him to explore, and he longed for his home planet and his family. So, he returned to his home planet, where he was welcomed back with open arms. He was happy to be home, and he knew that he had made the right decision. It is a commonly held belief that there is other life in the universe besides our own. For centuries, people have speculated about the possibility of life on other planets and the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligent life forms. With the advent of modern technology, this speculation has led to scientific investigation, and there are now a number of theories about alien life and the universe itself. The first scientific theory about alien life was formulated by the Italian philosopher Giordano Bruno in the 16th century. Bruno believed that the universe was infinite and that there were an infinite number of planets, each with its own inhabitants. This was a radical idea at the time, and Bruno was persecuted by the Catholic Church for his beliefs. The next major theory about alien life was put forward by the French astronomer Pierre Simon Laplace in the 18th century. Laplace believed that the universe was infinite and filled with an infinite number of stars and planets. He also believed that some of these planets could support life and that it was possible for intelligent life forms to exist on some of them. In the late 19th century, the American astronomer Percival Lowell proposed the theory that there are canals on Mars that were built by intelligent beings. Lowell's theory was based on observations of Mars made through a telescope, and it was later shown to be incorrect. In the early 20th century, the British astronomer Fred Hoyle and the Polish astronomer Nikolaus Copernicus proposed the theory that life could exist on other planets but that it was not necessarily intelligent. This theory was based on the idea that the universe is infinite and that there are an infinite number of stars and planets. The most recent theory about alien life was put forward by the American astronomer Carl Sagan in the 1970s. Sagan proposed that there is a high probability that there is intelligent life in the universe and that it is probably distributed evenly throughout the cosmos. This theory is based on the fact that the universe is very old, and that there are an infinite number of stars and planets. There is currently no scientific evidence for the existence of extraterrestrial life, but there are a number of theories about it. It is possible that aliens exist, but that they are very different from us and that we will never be able to understand them. Alternatively, it is possible that aliens do exist, but that they are so far away from us that we will never be able to meet them. The stars and moons have long been a source of wonder for humanity. We have looked to them for guidance and used them to navigate our way through the night. For as long as we have been looking up at the sky, they have been a constant source of fascination. The stars are huge balls of gas that are held together by their own gravity. They are so massive that the pressure at their cores is enough to fuse atoms together, which creates the light and heat that we see and feel from them. The moon is a rocky body that orbits Earth. It is much smaller than the stars, but it is still a fascinating object to behold. It is covered in craters and has a very thin atmosphere. 
Both the stars and the moon are incredibly important to us. They provide us with light and heat, and they help us to understand the passage of time. They are also a source of great beauty, and they remind us of the vastness of the universe. Looking at the stars and moon can be a very calming and soothing experience. It can help us to feel connected to something bigger than ourselves and can give us a sense of perspective. It is a reminder that we are just a small part of a much larger universe. There is no denying the sun's impact on our lives. It is the largest object in our solar system and is uniquely placed to be the centerpiece of everything that revolves around it. The sun is uniquely placed to impact our lives in a number of ways, from the food we eat to the weather we experience. It would be difficult to overstate the sun's importance to life on Earth. The sun is uniquely placed to impact our lives in a number of ways, from the food we eat to the weather we experience. It would be difficult to overstate the sun's importance to life on Earth. The sun is the source of all life, providing the energy that drives photosynthesis and powers the food chain. It also drives the water cycle, providing the evaporation that creates clouds and the precipitation that fills our rivers and lakes. The sun also has a direct impact on our weather. It drives the atmospheric circulation that creates the seasons and influences the jet stream, which can affect the severity of storms. The sun even affects our moods, as the change in daylight hours can trigger seasonal affective disorder. In short, the sun is essential to life on Earth. It is the source of our food, our water, and our weather. It affects our moods and our health. It is the largest object in our solar system and is uniquely placed to be the centerpiece of everything that revolves around it. Herbie the raccoon was always a bit different from the other raccoons in his forest. He was always daydreaming and looking up at the stars. Herbie always wanted to know what was out there, beyond the trees and the sky. One night, when Herbie was out exploring, he came across a strange glowing object in the forest. Herbie was curious and decided to investigate. He touched the object and suddenly found himself in a different place. He was floating in space, surrounded by stars. Herbie was amazed and couldn't believe his eyes. He was floating in space and time. He could see the Earth below him and the other planets in our solar system. He could also see into the future and the past. Herbie was fascinated by all the different things he could see and learn. Herbie spent hours exploring space and time. He saw the creation of the universe and the formation of our solar system. He saw the first humans on Earth and watched as they evolved and created civilizations. He saw the rise and fall of empires, the discovery of new worlds, and the colonization of space. Herbie also saw the potential future of humanity. He saw us reaching out to the stars and discovering new worlds. 
He saw us creating new technologies and discovering new ways to explore the universe. He saw us making peace with each other and living in harmony with the natural world. Herbie was so excited by all that he had seen and learned. He wanted to share his knowledge with the other raccoons, but he knew they would never believe him. So instead, Herbie decided to write a book about his adventures. He wanted to share his story with the world and show everyone that anything is possible if you just believe in yourself. Herbie's book was a huge success. People all over the world were fascinated by his stories and his ability to travel through time. Herbie had become a famous raccoon, and he loved every minute of it. Speaking of raccoons, I recently met Maggie the raccoon. Maggie the raccoon had always been interested in the world around her. As a young raccoon, she would often sit in her tree and watch the other animals scurry about, wondering what they were up to. She was especially fascinated by the tiny creatures that she couldn't see with her naked eye. When she asked her mother what they were, she was told that they were called microorganisms and that they were too small to see without a microscope. That was it. Maggie was hooked. She wanted to learn everything she could about microorganisms. She spent hours poring over books about them, and she even managed to get her hands on a microscope. She was soon able to see the fascinating world of the microorganisms for herself, and she was determined to become a scientist so that she could learn even more about them. Maggie's dream became a reality when she was accepted into a prestigious university to study microbiology. She worked hard and soon became one of the leading experts in her field. She has even written a few books about her findings. Now, Maggie is known all over the world as one of the most brilliant minds in microbiology. She is living proof that even a small creature like a raccoon can achieve great things if they set their mind to it. Microbiology is the study of very small living things, such as bacteria and viruses. It is a very important branch of science because these tiny organisms can cause diseases in humans, animals, and plants. Microbiology is a branch of biology that deals with the study of microorganisms. These are tiny living things that cannot be seen with the naked eye. They include bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. Microbiology is a very important branch of science because these tiny organisms can cause diseases in humans, animals, and plants. They can also be used to make food and medicine. Bacteria are single-celled microorganisms that can live in almost any environment. They are found in soil, water, air, and on plants and animals. Some bacteria are beneficial, while others can cause diseases. Viruses are even smaller than bacteria and can only reproduce inside the cells of other organisms. They cause a wide variety of diseases, including the common cold, flu, and polio. Fungi are microorganisms that can cause diseases in plants and animals. They include yeast and mold. 
Protozoa are single-celled microorganisms that live in water. Protozoa, that's a funny name. It could also be a pizza. Doesn't it sound like a name of a pizza? Have you ever heard the history of pizza? Pizza is one of the most popular and beloved foods in the world, and it has a long and rich history. Pizza first originated in Italy, and the word pizza actually comes from the Italian word for pie. The first pizza was created in Naples, Italy in the late 1700 seconds. It was a simple flatbread with tomatoes and cheese, and it was sold by street vendors. Pizza became increasingly popular in Italy, and by the late 1,800 seconds, there were over 2,000 pizza bakeries in Naples alone. Pizza made its way to America in the late 1,800 seconds, when Italian immigrants began to open pizza bakeries in cities like New York and Chicago. At first, pizza was mostly popular with Italian Americans, but it soon became a mainstream food. In the early 1,900 seconds, pizzerias started to pop up all over the United States. And in 1943, the first pizza chain in America, Pizza Hut, was founded. Today, pizza is one of the most popular foods in the world. It's estimated that there are over 60,000 pizzerias in the United States alone, and Americans consume about 350 slices of pizza per second. Pizza has come a long way from its humble beginnings in Naples, Italy, and it's now enjoyed by people all over the world. Unfortunately for Bert, he was born into a family of mosquitoes, and so he was constantly pestered to go out and find a human to bite. One day, Bert had had enough. He refused to go out and bite someone, and instead stayed home and ate leaves. His family was horrified, but Bert didn't care. As the days went by, Bert started to feel different. He wasn't sure what was happening to him, but he knew that he didn't feel like a mosquito anymore. His wings shrank and his body became thinner until he was barely recognizable as a mosquito at all. The other mosquitoes in his family were disgusted by Bert's new form, but he didn't care. He was still happy eating his greens and that was all that mattered to him. As the months went by, Bert's body continued to change. He grew taller and his arms and legs became longer. His wings disappeared completely and his skin turned a greenish color. He was no longer a mosquito but he didn't know what he was. One day, Bert met a group of other creatures who were like him. They called themselves vegans, and they told Bert that he was one of them. They explained that there were others like him all over the world. Bert was happy to finally find others like him, and he immediately felt at home with the vegans. Bert was always on the lookout for new and interesting plants to eat, and he was always trying to find new and interesting ways to get his protein. 
One day, he came across a new plant that he had never seen before. It was a strange looking plant, and it had a strange smell. Bert was curious about it, so he decided to try it. It turns out that the plant was a vegan mosquito repellent. At first, Bert was disappointed that he couldn't eat it, but he soon realized that this was a good thing. After all, if he could eat it, then so could other mosquitoes. And if other mosquitoes could eat it, that would mean that there would be fewer mosquitoes for him to compete with for food. Bert was happy to have found this new plant, and he decided to make it his mission to spread the word to other mosquitoes about this new food source. He went from plant to plant, telling all the mosquitoes he met about the vegan mosquito repellent. And before long, more and more mosquitoes were switching to a vegan diet. One day, Bert had had enough of being different and decided to start a revolution. He gathered all of the other mosquitoes together and spoke to them about his vision of a vegan world where they would all nibble on fruits and vegetables instead of biting people. At first, the other mosquitoes laughed at Bert and called him crazy. But Bert was determined to convince them and he eventually won them over with his passion and dedication. Soon, more and more mosquitoes were becoming vegan and the revolution was in full swing. Mosquitoes all over the world were changing their ways and becoming vegan. Veganism is a way of life that seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practical, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. There are many different reasons why people choose to become vegan. For some, it is an ethical decision based on the belief that all animals have a right to life and freedom and that it is wrong to kill or harm them for human benefit. For others, it is a health decision based on the belief that a vegan diet is the healthiest way to eat. And for others, it is an environmental decision, based on the belief that a plant-based diet is the best way to protect our planet. Whatever the reason, more and more people are choosing to live a vegan lifestyle. If you are thinking about becoming vegan, or are already vegan, and you will know that it can sometimes be a challenge to make sure you are getting all the nutrients your body needs. In fact, according to a recent report, the number of vegans in the UK has increased by 360% in the last 10 years. This is because a vegan diet excludes all animal-based foods, including meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy and honey. However, it is possible to get all the nutrients you need from a vegan diet. With a little planning and effort, you can make sure you are getting everything your body needs to stay healthy and strong. Here are some tips on how to get all the nutrients you need on a vegan diet. 1. Make sure you are eating a variety of different plant-based foods. This will help you to get all the essential nutrients your body needs. 2. Include plenty of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds in your diet. These foods are packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and fiber. 3. Eat plenty of beans, lentils and tofu. These foods are good sources of protein, iron and calcium. 
4. If you are not getting enough vitamin B12, then you may need to take a supplement. Vitamin B12 is found naturally in animal-based foods, so it can be tricky to get enough on a vegan diet. 5. Make sure you are drinking enough fluids. This is especially important if you are eating a lot of dry, fibrous foods like whole grains, fruits and vegetables. 6. Avoid processed vegan foods. These foods are often high in sugar, salt and unhealthy fats. 7. If you are pregnant or breastfeeding, or are planning to become pregnant, then you should talk to a healthcare professional about your diet. This is because you will need to make sure you are getting enough of certain nutrients, such as iron and folic acid. 8. If you have any health concerns, then you should talk to a healthcare professional about your diet. This is because they will be able to give you specific advice on what to eat to stay healthy. Baba has been thinking a lot about veganism lately. He's not quite sure if he could ever give up meat and dairy, but he's intrigued by the idea. He's heard that veganism is healthier and more environmentally friendly, and he's curious to learn more. Baba does some research and finds that there are many reasons to consider veganism. For one, it is better for your health. A plant-based diet has been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease, cancer, and other chronic diseases. It can also help you to lose weight and maintain a healthy weight. Another reason to go vegan is for the environment. The meat and dairy industries are huge contributors to greenhouse gas emissions and deforestation. Going vegan is one of the best things you can do for the planet. Finally, Bubba is drawn to veganism for the animals. He has always loved animals, and the thought of them suffering for our benefit doesn't sit well with him. He knows that by going vegan, he can help reduce the amount of animals that are hurt and killed for food. After giving it some thought, Baba decides to try veganism for a month. He's not sure if he can stick with it long term, but he wants to give it a fair chance. He is surprised at how easy it is to find vegan food options, and he enjoys the new flavors and textures he's experiencing. He starts to feel better, both physically and mentally, and he's happy to be helping the animals and the environment. At the end of the month, Baba decides that veganism is the right choice for him. He's not looking back, and he's excited to continue on his journey to better health, a cleaner planet, and a kinder world. Baba was always a bit different from the other kids in his neighborhood. He was always a bit quiet and introspective, and he never really seemed to fit in with the other kids. When he was a teenager, he started to become interested in veganism and Buddhism. He read everything he could about both subjects, and he decided that he wanted to become a Buddhist monk. Baba started to practice meditation and veganism, and he slowly started to distance himself from the material world. He donated all of his possessions to charity, and he started to live a very simple life. He was drawn to the peace and tranquility of Buddhist monasteries, 
and he decided that he wanted to become a monk. Baba traveled to Asia, and he spent several years living in Buddhist monasteries. He studied the teachings of the Buddha, and he learned how to meditate. He also learned how to live a life of simplicity and compassion. He became a respected monk, and he even helped to teach other monks. Baba eventually returned to the United States, and he started to share his knowledge with others. He started a vegan Buddhist community, and he helped to raise awareness about the importance of compassion and peace. Baba was a man with a dream. He wanted to create a vegan Buddhist community in the USA that would be a haven for those seeking peace and enlightenment. And so, with the help of his friends and family, he founded the community of Boulder, Colorado. The community quickly grew, attracting like-minded individuals from all over the country. They came to Boulder to meditate, to practice yoga, and to live in harmony with nature. The community was based on the principles of nonviolence, compassion, and respect for all beings. The Boulder community quickly became known as a place of healing and transformation. People came to Boulder to heal their bodies, minds, and spirits. They came to find themselves and to find peace. The community was not without its challenges, however. There were those who disagreed with the vegan lifestyle, and there were those who felt that the community was too strict. But Baba and the others persevered, and the community continued to grow. Today, the Boulder community is thriving. There's a place of acceptance, peace, and love. And it all started with a man named Baba and his dream. No matter who you are, where you come from, or what you've been through, everyone has dreams. Dreams are what keep us going. They're what inspire us to be better and do better. Dreams are what make us unique and special. Without dreams, we would be nothing. Dreams give us hope and a reason to keep going even when things are tough. They remind us of what we're fighting for and why we should never give up. When you have a dream, it's important to dare to go after it. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. You will face challenges and obstacles, but don't let that stop you. Keep pushing forward and never give up on your dreams. It's not always easy to go after your dreams, but it's always worth it. So dare to dream and dare to go after them. You never know what you might achieve. So be like Bubba. Or like Kim. Kim has always loved dogs, ever since she was a little girl. Her dream is to one day own her own doggy daycare. She has always been a responsible pet owner and has always been quick to help out a friend or neighbor when they need someone to watch their dog. She has even volunteered at her local animal shelter and has a deep love for all animals. 
Kim's dream is to one day have a large facility where she can take in dogs of all shapes and sizes and provide them with the love and care they deserve. She plans to have a staff of trained professionals who will work around the clock to make sure all of the dogs in her care are happy and healthy. She also plans to have a wide variety of activities and amenities for the dogs so that they can have the best possible experience while they are staying at her daycare. Kim knows that starting her own business will be a lot of work, but she is up for the challenge. She is confident that her dream of owning a doggy daycare will become a reality, and she can't wait to start making all of the dogs in her care happy and healthy. Dogs have been considered man's best friend for centuries. The special bond between humans and dogs is undeniable. Dogs offer companionship, loyalty, and love unconditionally. They provide us with protection, security, and service. They are truly man's best friend. The companionship that dogs offer is unique and special. They are always happy to see us and provide us with unconditional love. They offer us comfort and solace when we are feeling down. They are always there for us, no matter what. The loyalty of dogs is unquestioned. They are always loyal to their owners and will do anything to protect them. They will guard our homes and belongings and will even put their own lives at risk to protect us. The service that dogs provide is invaluable. They help us in so many ways from being seeing eye dogs to working as therapy dogs. They provide us with security and peace of mind. They are truly man's best friend. The bond between humans and dogs is special and unique. Dogs offer us their companionship, loyalty, and love unconditionally. They are always there for us, no matter what. They are truly man's best friend. And cats. Cats have been cherished by people for centuries, and their popularity is only increasing. In the United States alone, it is estimated that there are over 86 million pet cats. That's a lot of love for these furry creatures. While some people may think that cats are aloof and uninterested in humans, the truth is that they form strong bonds with their owners. A study in the journal Animal Cognition found that cats recognize their owners' voices and are more responsive to them than to strangers. Cats also have a lot of love to give. They show their affection in different ways, such as purring, headbutting, and licking. And they have a special way of looking at you that communicates their love. So why do people love cats so much? There are many reasons. For one, they make great companions. They're low maintenance, independent, and can be content to just hang out with you. They're also playful and can provide hours of entertainment. Another reason people love cats is that they're very cute. They have expressive faces, and their small size makes them seem vulnerable and in need of protection. 
Plus, who can resist a cute kitten? But there's more to cats than just being cute and cuddly. They also offer health benefits. Studies have shown that spending time with cats can lower blood pressure, reduce stress, and boost immunity. So if you're looking for a way to relax and improve your health, consider getting a cat. There's no doubt that cats are special creatures. They're loved by millions of people around the world and bring joy, companionship, and even health benefits to our lives. If you're thinking of adding a cat to your family, you're sure to be in for a rewarding experience. There are many differences between cats and dogs, from their appearance to their personality. Let's start with their appearance. Dogs are typically much larger than cats, with some breeds growing to be over a hundred pounds. Cats, on the other hand, are typically much smaller, with most breeds only reaching around 20 pounds. Dogs also have much more fur than cats, which not only keeps them warmer in cold weather but also requires more grooming. Cats, on the other hand, have very little fur, which means they don't need to be groomed as often. When it comes to personality, dogs are typically much more outgoing and friendly than cats. They love to meet new people and are always up for a game of fetch or a good belly rub. Cats, on the other hand, are often more independent and aloof. They can be friendly, but they typically prefer to spend their time alone or with other cats. Of course, there are always exceptions to the rule, and there are some dogs who are more independent and some cats who are more outgoing. But in general, these are the differences between cats and dogs. So, which is better? It really depends on what you're looking for in a pet. If you want a loyal friend who will buy your side, a dog is probably the better choice. But if you're looking for a low-maintenance pet who is content to spend most of their time napping, a cat is probably the better option. Camilla the cat and Jenny the dog have been best friends since they were both just little puppies. They loved to play together and cuddle up when they took naps. Even though they were different species, they didn't care what anyone else thought and just enjoyed each other's company. However, as they grew older, they started to face judgment from other cats and dogs. They would hiss and bark at each other, telling Camilla and Jenny that they were weird and didn't belong together. Camilla and Jenny tried to ignore them, but it was hard. One day, they were playing together in the park when a group of dogs started to surround them, barking and growling. Camilla and Jenny were terrified and didn't know what to do. Just then, a man came and scooped them both up into his arms. He told them that they were special and that they should never listen to what anyone else says. They could be best friends forever, no matter what. Camilla and Jenny were so grateful to the man and they hugged each other tightly. From then on, they stuck together and never let anyone or anything come between them again. Robert was always different from the other tigers. 
He loved music and dreamed of becoming a famous musician one day. His dream seemed impossible, but he never gave up hope. One day, out of the blue, Robert's dream came true. He was discovered by a music producer who was looking for new talent. Robert was signed to a record label and released his first album. The album was a huge success, and Robert quickly became a household name. He went on to release several more albums, all of which were met with critical acclaim. Today, Robert is one of the most successful musical artists in the world. He has sold millions of albums and has won numerous awards. His dream of becoming a famous musician came true. And it all started with a little tiger called Robert who never gave up on his dreams. There are many weird and wonderful things in the world, and one of the most odd and interesting is the subject of collecting rocks. For some, the idea of picking up a rock and taking it home with them may seem strange, but for those who enjoy collecting rocks, it can be a very rewarding hobby. There are many different types of rocks that can be collected, and each has its own unique properties. Some rocks are very valuable, while others are more common and less valuable. However, all rocks can be interesting, and even the most common rocks can have beautiful colors and patterns. Rocks can be collected in many different ways. Some people simply pick up rocks that they find interesting, while others go on rock hunting trips to specific locations where they know there are good rocks to be found. Some people even trade rocks with other collectors. Collecting rocks can be a fun and interesting hobby for people of all ages. It can be a great way to learn about the different types of rocks and to find and appreciate the beauty in all kinds of rocks, even the ones that are not valuable. Weird is defined as something that is strange or odd. There are many things in this world that can be considered weird, and there are even more things that could be considered weird if we only knew about them. In this essay, we will explore some of the weirdest things out there, from the slightly odd to the completely bizarre. One of the weirdest things out there is the fact that our dogs can continue to function for up to 10 minutes after they bark. This is because dogs are as cool as ice machines in the hallway of a hotel. One of the weirdest animals in the world is the axolotl, which is a type of salamander. The axolotl is able to regenerate its limbs and other body parts, meaning that it can effectively grow back any body part that is lost. This is an amazing ability that scientists are still trying to understand. There are many other weird and wonderful things out there in the world, and this is only a small selection. We hope that this has given you a taste of the weird and wonderful things that are out there, and that you will go out and explore them for yourself. In a world where the hustle and bustle of everyday life can be so overwhelming, it's important to find ways to relax and escape the stress. For me, one of the most dreamy and calming subjects is the night sky. There's something about the stars and the moon that just fills me with a sense of wonder and peace. Maybe it's the fact that they've been shining down on us for centuries, 
or maybe it's because they remind us of the infinite possibilities that exist beyond our everyday lives. Either way, looking up at the night sky is always a magical experience. Whether I'm lying in my backyard on a warm summer night, or taking a walk on a cool winter night, I always make sure to take a moment to look up at the stars. And every time I do, I can't help but feel grateful for the simple beauty of the world around us. The night sky is a reminder that there's so much more to life than the stresses of our everyday lives. It's a reminder that we are all connected to something much bigger and more powerful than we could ever imagine. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed, take a moment to look up at the night sky and let the calmness of the universe wash over you. My favorite dreamy and calming subject is the ocean. I love the ocean because it is so vast and blue and it always seems to be teeming with life. I love the sound of the waves crashing against the shore and the smell of salt in the air. I can spend hours just staring at the ocean and daydreaming. The ocean is a place of great mystery and beauty. It is a place where we can go to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. When I am at the ocean, I feel like I am in another world. It is a place where I can relax and just be. There is something about the ocean that just makes me feel at peace. It is a place where I can go to forget about my troubles and just be in the moment. I am always in awe of the power and the majesty of the ocean. It is a place that I will always love. Kind love is the most beautiful thing in the world. It is the feeling of complete and utter acceptance understanding and forgiveness. It is the ability to see the beauty in someone, even when they are at their worst. It is the willingness to put someone else's happiness and well-being above your own. Kind love is not simply a feeling, it is a choice. It is a decision to see the good in someone, even when they are at their worst. It is a decision to put their happiness and well-being above your own. It is a decision to forgive, even when they have hurt you deeply. Kind love is the most powerful force in the world. It has the ability to change people, to transform lives. It is the light that guides us through the dark times. It is the hope that keeps us going when all seems lost. Kind love is the most important thing in the world. It is the only thing that truly matters. Creativity is often seen as a process of coming up with new and original ideas. However, creativity can also be seen as the ability to come up with new and funny ideas. This type of creativity is often referred to as comic or humorous creativity. Humor is an important part of our lives. It can make us laugh, smile, and feel good. It can also help us deal with difficult situations and make them seem more manageable. Humor is a form of communication that can help us connect with others. 
there are many different ways to be creative and funny. Some people are naturally funny and can come up with jokes and stories easily. Others have to work a bit harder at it. But, with a little effort, anyone can learn to be more creative and funny. One way to be more creative and funny is to come up with funny nicknames for people. This can be a great way to make people laugh and to bond with them. It can also be a way to show your creativity and to make people think about things in a different way. Another way to be more creative and funny is to come up with funny situations. This can be done by thinking about what would happen if something unusual happened. For example, what would happen if a person woke up one day and found that they had turned into a chicken? You can also be creative and funny by coming up with funny analogies. This is a way of explaining something by using a comparison that is usually not literal. For example, you could say that someone is as slow as a turtle or as sharp as a tack. There are many other ways to be creative and funny. The important thing is to have fun and to enjoy the process. Speaking of chickens, the chicken or the egg is a classic question that has been asked for centuries. There are a few different theories out there about which one came first. The most popular theory is that the egg came first, but there is also a theory that the chicken came first. The egg came first theory is based on the fact that chickens are born from eggs. This means that the first chicken must have come from an egg. There is also evidence to support this theory. For example, chicken eggs have a hard shell that protects the embryo inside. This is something that chicken eggs have in common with other bird eggs, but not with reptile eggs. This suggests that chickens evolved from a bird-like ancestor, not from a reptile. The chicken came first theory is based on the fact that chickens are more closely related to dinosaurs than they are to birds. This means that chickens could have evolved from a dinosaur-like ancestor. There is some evidence to support this theory. For example, chickens have a claw on their back that is similar to the claw that some dinosaurs had. So, which one came first? The answer is probably that we will never know for sure. Both theories have evidence to support them and it is impossible to know for sure which one is correct. The humble chicken has a long and storied history, dating back thousands of years to its wild ancestor, the red jungle fowl. These birds were first domesticated in Asia, and over time, various breeds were developed for different purposes. Some were used for meat, others for eggs, and still others for show. Today, chickens are widely considered to be one of the most common domesticated animals in the world. They are kept by people of all cultures and religions, and play an important role in many cuisines. In the United States alone, there are an estimated 9 billion chickens in existence. Despite their ubiquity, Chickens are still somewhat of a mystery to us. 
They are social creatures with complex behaviors and are known to form strong bonds with both their own kind and with humans. They are also incredibly hardy and can live in a wide range of climates and environments. The chicken is a fascinating animal and there is much still to learn about them. In this essay, we will explore the history and evolution of these amazing creatures, from their humble beginnings as wild junglefowl to the ubiquitous domesticated birds we know today. Ted the chicken was a humble bird with a big dream. He wanted to go to a TED Talk conference and share his ideas with the world. Ted was born on a small farm in the middle of nowhere. The other animals on the farm would laugh at him and call him names because he was different. He didn't have the same feathers as them, and he was always walking around with his head held high. But Ted didn't care what the other animals thought of him. He knew he was special and he had something to say. One day, Ted saw a flyer for the TED Talk conference. He was so excited and he knew that this was his chance to share his ideas with the world. He asked the farmer if he could go, but the farmer just laughed and said, You're just a chicken, Ted. You can't go to a TED Talk conference. Ted was determined to prove the farmer wrong. He started reading books and watching videos about public speaking. He practiced his speech over and over again. And finally, the day came when he was ready to go to the TED Talk conference. He packed his bags and started to walk towards the conference. It was a long journey, but Ted didn't mind. He was focused on his goal. Along the way, he met other animals who were also going to the conference. They were all excited to hear Ted's speech. When he arrived at the conference, Ted was nervous, but he went on stage and gave the best speech of his life. The audience loved him and he even won a prize. Ted was so happy that he had achieved his dream. Ted was even invited to London to give a talk. Ted was very excited to visit London and see all the sights. He had never been to a big city before and was eager to explore. He took in the sights and sounds of the city and even got to meet some famous chickens while he was there. Ted enjoyed his time in London and it was a great experience for him. He was able to learn about different cultures and meet new people. He even got to try some new food. Ted actually decided to move to London after his visit. He rented an apartment in Battersea and started a new life. He loved the city and didn't want to leave. Ted is now a well-known chicken in London. He's known for being friendly and always up for a chat. He's also known for being a bit of a mischief maker. But that's all part of his charm. Ted is a happy chicken who loves his life in London. 
He's grateful for the opportunity he had to visit the city and is excited to see what the future holds for him. The future is an exciting place, full of possibilities and potential. It's a time when anything and everything is possible, and the unknown is full of potential. That's what makes not knowing what the future holds so exciting. It's the unknown that makes the future so thrilling. We don't know what's going to happen, so anything could happen. It's a time of potential and possibility. We can't predict the future, so we don't know what's in store for us. That's what makes it so exciting. The future is a time of change and growth. We can't predict how we'll change and grow, but we can be sure that we will. It's a time when we'll learn new things and discover new things about ourselves. We'll make new friends and experiences that will shape who we become. The future is an exciting place because it's full of potential. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know anything is possible. It's a time of change and growth where we'll learn new things about ourselves and the world around us. For me, the future is a time to continue learning and growing. I am excited to see what new opportunities and experiences come my way. I want to continue to challenge myself and push my boundaries. I'm curious about the world and I want to learn as much as I can. The future is also a time for new beginnings. I'm looking forward to starting new projects and ventures. I'm excited to see what I can create and accomplish. I'm open to whatever the future may bring. Whatever the future holds, I am ready for it. I am excited to see what it has in store for me. There is nothing quite like the feeling of being creative. Whether it's writing a story, painting a picture, or composing a song, the act of creating something new is always exciting. And the best part is, there are no rules when it comes to being creative. You can let your imagination run wild and let your creativity flow freely. There are so many joys to being creative. One of the best parts is the satisfaction you feel when you finish something you're proud of. It's a great feeling to know that you created something that didn't exist before. And if you're really happy with your creation, you might even get to share it with others and see their reactions. Another great thing about being creative is that it can be a great way to relieve stress. When you're focused on being creative, you're not focused on whatever is stressing you out. You can forget about your problems for a little while and just enjoy the process of creating something new. And even if you don't end up finishing your project, the act of working on it can still be therapeutic. There are endless possibilities when you're being creative. You can explore different ideas, try new things, and make mistakes. It's all part of the creative process. And the more you create, the better you'll get at it. 
Who knows, you might even surprise yourself with what you're capable of. Taking risks and being brave enough to try new things is an important part of life. It can be scary to step out of your comfort zone and try something new, but it can also be incredibly rewarding. Being brave doesn't mean that you're never afraid. It just means that you don't let your fear hold you back from living your life to the fullest. When you take risks, you open yourself up to new experiences and new opportunities. You might find that you're good at something you never would have tried if you hadn't been brave enough to take the leap. Of course, it's important to be smart about the risks you take. You don't want to put yourself in danger or do something that could have serious consequences. But taking risks can be as simple as trying a new food or signing up for a dance class. In the end, being brave is all about living your life with no regrets. It's about doing things that make you happy and following your dreams. So don't be afraid to take a few risks. Evelyn had always been a brave and creative person, but it was her ability to face challenges and overcome them that made her the world's bravest and most creative person. She was born into a family of artists, so creativity was in her blood. From a young age, she was always pushing the boundaries and trying new things. This didn't always sit well with her parents, who preferred the more traditional art forms, but they soon realized that their daughter had a special talent. As Evelyn grew older, she continued to explore her creativity, and she quickly developed a reputation for being a fearless innovator. She wasn't afraid to take risks, and her bold approach to life inspired others to do the same. Evelyn's creativity wasn't just limited to her art. She was also an incredible athlete, and she was always pushing herself to be the best. She was the first woman to compete in the men's division of the Ironman Triathlon, and she went on to win the race. You know, I'm not a poet. I'm just a guy who likes to rhyme. I don't write for money. I do it for fun time. And sometimes I think, Why can't I be funny all the time? Then I remember. I'm not a comedian, I'm a poet. Did you know that? Poetry is a genre of literature that often uses figurative language to communicate emotions and ideas. Poets often use rhyme and meter to create musical or incantatory effects. Poetry has a long history, dating back to ancient oral traditions. Poetry is often divided into categories, such as love poetry, war poetry, and nature poetry. There are many famous poets, such as William Shakespeare, Robert Frost, and Maya Angelou. Poetry can be enjoyed by everyone, whether it is read aloud or silently. Poetry often explores the human experience, with all of its joys and sorrows. 
Not poems celebrate the happiness of being in love, while poems about loss and grief explore the pain of losing a loved one. War poems can describe the horror of battle or the feelings of those who are left behind. Nature poems can capture the beauty of the natural world or the feelings of awe and wonder that it inspires. Poetry can be a way to express emotions that are difficult to put into words. It can be a way to explore the world and our place in it. It can be a way to connect with others and to find meaning in our lives. What makes a poem successful? There is no one answer to this question. A poem can be successful if it makes the reader feel something, or if it makes them think about the world in a new way. A poem can be successful if it is beautiful, or if it is funny. A poem can be successful if it is able to touch the heart, or if it is able to make the mind race. There is no one right way to write a poem, and no one right way to enjoy one. The best way to enjoy poetry is to explore it, and to find the poems that speak to you.